What? Oh my God, Renee, you did not. I said we're still a little off center. No, we're not. We are. Rick, are we still a little off center? A little bit. Oh a my little God. bit. Look, I'll just not, turn no, this no, shit. This. I'll move it that <laughs> not way. Not that. I'll fuck everybody you up again. You and I in the frame. Oh okay. my gosh. Moving on. Details, Moving details, on. details. Um, we. <laughs> this is how we're going to start. Um, how are you? I'm good. I'm stuck in the details. <laughs> you look very beautiful as always. Thank you. Um, Renee, Renee, <laughs> Why are you Renee, like, Renee loves seasons because of her outfits. Well, I already yeah. know you. You're already doing the spring thing. Yeah, well, because it's hot here in Texas. If I could wear a few more jackets, I would. But it's No, come winter, hot. like, it's not even that cold and she's got the coats on. And I'm like... It's all about the wardrobe. It has the nothing to do. It's fall, bullshit. In the winter and the it boots. Is, and bullshit. in Texas, our window of opportunity to wear those things is very small. So you have to almost like pick which jackets you want to wear that season. Yes. Tell us more. <laughs> For the ladies, <laughs> uh, they, well, they listen. They don't want to hear me. They don't want to hear me. On, go on. No, no, no. I'm Hi. Actually, welcome. Hello. Let's let's talk seasons okay what you, i wasn't what gonna do talking? that but here we are yeah i know you already you were, i thought you were gonna pick on me for my ring you were already talking about my ring no i'm not gonna pick on you about your ring i, I don't even know what the fuck is going on right now so since we're t- <laughs> i almost feel like this is one of those episodes where we need to clap and start again no we're not starting again <laughs> we're not starting again everybody's gonna get this one okay. this is the episode <laughs> That they're getting. They're getting the Captain Evil's giddy for no reason. Um, what's going on? What? It, might be, it might be the Dayquil. Maybe that's what it is. I'm a cheap Are you on Dayquil? <laughs> um, no, no, seriously. Talk about so spring. Let's talk spring. spring. Yes, spring. It's well, let's talk wardrobe. There's flowers. You can start to wear open toed shoes. Like, what do you want to talk about? All of that. You wear a tank top year round. This is a weird conversation to have with you. Oh, Renee gets, she, how can you be showered and ready in 10 minutes? I wear the same shit every day. You do. Every day. You do. And to the point where I'm like, okay, you need to like switch the hat. But Adrian's the same way. It's time to wash Like Adrian's hat. not a fashion guy. Adrian's t-shirt shorts, he's right out the door, right? The industry we're in. Yeah. I mean, he's out the door. Yeah. R- Rick, same thing. Well, now Rick will match his sneakers. He's a, Rick's a sneaker head. He is all about the sneakers. Is that a term? A sneaker head? Yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. How okay. many pairs of sneakers do you have, Rick? Uh, Thirty-seven. No. Why is that? Here's, a lot is or that, that just a like a guess, or you like really know the number of he sneakers? He literally you have? did not fucking hesitate. He was like, "I have thirty-seven. Yeah, it's I collect them. Yeah. How many Jordans? So that's a that's a sore spot for me. Only three pairs, because I you know, I have two pairs of Jordan fours and then a pair of Jordan fives. But it's a sore spot because every time I go out, Gigi pulls me away and says, no. Yeah, but you make money now. Why can you not go get the shoes you want? Because there's $700 for the ones I want. So get what you want. You earned it. Yeah. I mean, it's like, all, it's like it, all the women wearing those. What are they? The golden goose sneakers that are like. You never got into bucks. those. No, I didn't. I'd rather spend it on something else. That's just me. I'm not, not that I wouldn't spend it. I would just rather spend it on something else than sneakers. 37 pair of tennis shoes. How many pairs of boots? Which one's your favorite? How many boots do I have? I have a lot of boots. (laughs) And those all look the same. They're not even different colors. They're black or brown. You have two options. Give them to me. It's not like Jordans that come in a variety of colors. I don't like walking to the boot store going, gosh, I need a pair that matches my green tank top. But it is like a hobby for you too, just like the collecting shoes. Not, is no, it's hobby. not so much. Cowboy it's a, boots are almost like not that. so much. It's a hobby. I, I do like nicer pairs of boots. I'm not gonna shit on any boots out there, but the cheaper boots, they're not comfortable. Yeah. So I, I have gotten to the point where I, I get nicer pairs of boots. Yeah. But what's your favorite pair? Jordan fours, black. The black Jordan fours. I just. I, what is crazy? I didn't crazy. realize Jordans were so expensive. I mean, I knew they were pricey, but I didn't. Realize no, they're very they expensive. But what's crazy expensive. to me is is the sustainability of Jordans. Yeah. The fact that my son, who's eight years old, is like, I want Jordans. Yeah. Like for us, I understand why me and Adrian and Rick want them. We grew up watching Michael Jordan. Right. I remember the commercials. Like, well, why do seven year old boys care? Yeah. yeah. Why Why do eight year old boys? Th- that's what's been. Whatever Jordan does to market is 
genius. Yeah. Because. Because Garrett hates to tie his shoes and he still wants to wear Jordans. Well, you know, I did a, I, I did a show for Daniel McCutcheon, our friend, and I did the show for free. Of course, he's our friend. Yes. And, you know, he's such a class act. He wanted to give me a gift. He gave me a pair of Jordan 1s. Uh-huh. And they're in my closet. They're the most uncomfortable shoe <laughs> I've ever worn in my life. Are they really? Oh, Is my. I, I, I was like, oh, I'll wear them with sweats or something. So I put them on. And I'm like, these are fucking garbage. Oh no, it was muddy outside, and you came out in the Jordans with sweats, and you looked like you were wearing a costume. It was so out of character. It wasn't me. Even our niece, because I think our nieces were visiting, they were like, what? What? Did, why does No, because all my other feet? my other two tennis shoes were filthy muddy. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, I'll throw these on with sweats. And I was like, these are so fucking uncomfortable. And they don't look like me. I mean, they are beyond uncomfortable. But they Not are, even like, have, Adrian, have you ever worn them? Not the Jordan 1s, no. Rick, are they uncomfortable to you? All Jordans are uncomfortable. Well, let, let me say this. Uh, the Jordans 1 through 10s are so uncomfortable. 1 through 10, he knows. Why? That's that's crazy. I, just, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I honestly, I mean, I am of the age of comfort. Well, that's some, uh, that's some amazing branding. I don't care what I look like. I want it to be comfortable. Like when I buy underwear, I want the crotch pre-stretched. <laughs> I don't want to have to break in. It doesn't take much. I don't, oh, <laughs> shit. Let's start over. Let's start this episode over. I don't like Renee having good ones. Um, that was good, honey. I'm proud thanks, of you. Thanks. I'm very proud of you. Um, but that's interesting. Well, Renee, mm. Renee does go, she goes nuts for stilettos, heels. Uh, no, I don't know about that. That's your mama. Your mama has an amazing shoe collection. Oh, she has She will, like, amount. bring me a pair of shoes and be like, uh, I bought these. I don't need them. And they're, like, You have a fun, shit funky. ton of shoes, Renee. I do. I need to, like, I need to, like, clear out some of my closet. Shit ton. These, but these, I have bad feet. So these days I'm about more practical shoes, too. No, we're getting old. But they have to look cute. It's hard to find cute practical shoes. I don't want like orthopedics. Well, she's got a she's got quite the uh, tennis shoe collection as well. I do. You, she, Renee has a lot of tennis. I'm like, well, because they have to match your clothes. No, like, they don't. Yes, Adrian they didn't do. wear. They have like I like those. I, I took a picture of them, Renee. I want some of those. Uh huh. Um, but because I like them, they're just gray. <laughs> like they're just. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're just. They're clean. They're simple. <laughs> They're just fucking great. Yeah. They're actually tall. You get like an extra inch on their seat. Really? Oh, yeah. oh babe, I need those. Yeah. I need those. But no, but you those are just. an extra inch more than Those are, least. like, to me, nice, <laughs> regular <laughs> shoes. You didn't hear my joke. That or you totally ignored it the way what? I ignored a lot of yours. I said you need an extra inch in more than one place. <laughs> oh, you motherfuckers. All right. Okay. It's going to be that kind You're of episode. setting me up today. I'm just, look, I have been so nice to you. <laughs> I have been so nice to you. I was going to say your boobs are hanging out if there were any. <laughs> if they. <laughs> if you had some. Oh, <laughs> shit, son. Not that funny. Here we go. Not um, that funny. But you have a nice pooper, and that's why. Okay. That's why you're a homeowner. That is okay. why you're a homeowner. Okay. Anyway, this, <laughs> you, you can laugh. We have a, we have a, <laughs> we have a new girl that works for the social media company, and it's Before, our first time to sit in on the podcast. It's our first uh, first day. Oh, and, it's our uh, first day. When we hire people here at the social media company, we pretty much sit them down and go, bitch, fuck, dick, and then we check your face. <laughs> and then her face was like, all right, it's a place I want to work. And we're like, okay, you're in. Sign here, 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 here. Initial here, initial here. Sign here, here. <laughs> it's like the contract on Wonka. On Wonka, yeah. Print, yeah just don't read it, don't read it. Just sign it, just sign it. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I was actually, you know, I, I was thinking just our weekend to talk about our weekend. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I just love having my family with me on the road. Yeah. So this, this weekend was, was kind of a, an interesting one to take the family, but we had not traveled as a family in quite some time. Well, we kind of looked at your schedule for the year and now that you're doing theaters, I mean, it's easier to travel as a family when you're doing a comedy club and we're in the same place for three or four days. You know, you check into the hotel. I actually unpack our suitcases. And we, and we get to see the town. Yeah, whatever. we're there. Um, now that you're doing theaters, it's harder to take two kids along. Um, it's, it's definitely hard. So we did the we did the tour bus thing so that we'd have a kind of a, a home. Yes. 
if you will, but we didn't even see Chattanooga. No, we flew in, the bus picked us up at the airport, and we went straight to the theater, and the kids were so wiped, they didn't even want to get out of the bus. Well, but they do love it. Like, yes. they get in their little bunks, and they set up their little, their little. you know, Garrett's got a system. Uh-huh. You know, all the bunks have their own little plugs, and Garrett's in there charging his headphones. And he calls he it sets his man cave. His little man cave. my man cave. And, and he just loves it. And then Delilah just runs up and down. This time the she bus. called it my princess bunk. Yeah, she, she goes, said, I'm going to go my, to my princess, my princess bunk. bunk. And, you know, so we got to Chattanooga. <clears throat> By the way, beautiful little town. I wish we would have gotten to see. I know. People, more you guys were really sweet. I posted on Instagram, like, where should we go? We don't have a lot of time in each city. And people sent some great recommendations for Chattanooga. We just didn't have time to do We didn't have time. We didn't do anything. You know, and I mean, the kids didn't even want to go into the theater. No. Like, they're like, we're just going to chill. Woke up in Knoxville. Yeah. And I, I, I got to be honest, Knoxville, not that many things to do. No, but when you're traveling with kids or when you're doing it the way we do, the thing that was really convenient about Knoxville is everything was right there. We were able to like, yeah, as we opposed to, to some of the other cities. Yeah, we would walk to things. We could walk to breakfast. We could come back to the bus when Delilah needed a change of clothes and then go back out again. And it wasn't a big deal. That's where we went to the um, Children's Museum. And it's so funny because Garrett's at the age, he's eight. He's at the age where he's like, oh, it's for babies. I don't want to go. It's for babies. Well, because they have like the little play But then you get store. there and then he's playing like a baby. <laughs> like he's like all over it, running around. Oh, I'm going to go do this. I'm like, oh, I thought it was for babies. No, we just had to find the things that were more in his wheelhouse. Well, I, I will tell you that, that Delilah, she's our little gangster. If you, she will not look for you. No, and she meets a friend everywhere she goes. So Renee went off with Garrett and she goes, I go, I'll stay with Delilah. You if you literally have to be next to her and you have to have eyes on her at all times because she does not give a fuck. She literally will just walk off. <laughs> Get Garrett would be like, Dad, follow, like, come here. <clears throat> Delilah? Like, she's hanging out with some other kid that was homeless i guess i don't know i don't know where the mom was i think the little kid lives there but delilah's like i'm delilah like she like she's so want to be my friend yeah want to play yeah um and then i just had the moment they're they're in this it's like a a rocket ship like it's a whole nasa theme thing it's like a rocket ship they have little controls and these two little girls are running the show and other kids would come and play and they'd be like, well, you need to sit over there because, you know, we're dealing with a meteor shower. And and then Delilah blew my mind. She goes, there's a meteor coming in one hour. We have no choice but to improvise. I'm like, did my three-year-old just say improvise? Like, it was – so she's hanging on this little girl. And, I mean, they probably played in there for – and I just watched them. And, and if you're not a parent, yeah, you don't know – like, I don't want to be at the Children's Museum. Like, I don't want to fucking be there. Yeah. But then I find myself lost in watching my kid have a good time. Yeah. Like, I just sat there. You know what I mean? You just watch your kids enjoy. And Delilah was enjoying. She made this little friend, ugly little kid. And, <laughs> I mean, I think she lived there. Um, <laughs> I didn't see her oh, mom at all. Oh, no. I had a, well, you were off with Garrett watching the show in the planetarium. I had a little girl come up to me crying, just like in tears, shaking. And I'm like, what happened? Are you hurt? Where's your mom? I'm like looking around. They can't find her. Another woman comes up to me. She goes, if you take her to the front desk, they'll help her find her mom. But I'm like, this place is not that big. Like, does it, who, there's a crying child here. Who doesn't see them? I mean, but I, I, I don't, I forgive that parent. Mm-hmm. Because a few times I'm like, oh, shit, there goes Delilah. <laughs> like, I mean, where she just took off, yeah. right? And I'm like chasing her down, yeah. you know? Yeah, if you have more than one. I saw a grandma who was there with two kids, and the lost little girl kind of resembled the grandma. So I was like, did you lose someone? I was like, did you? She goes, oh, no. She goes, I can barely keep up with two. I'm not bringing more than that here. So then Delilah <laughs> loses that friend, not in a bad way. Like, they lost <laughs> each other. So then Delilah made a new friend. And then the other friend came back. She's like, where's Delilah? And I'm like, oh, bad news, kid. Delilah's got a new homie. (laughs) Like, now there's three. When it's three, it ain't going to work. 
<laughs> Odd and De- numbers. And, yeah, and Delilah was like, you're yesterday's news. Like, get out of here, old friend. Then, Because the other one was older. Yeah. So then she's hanging out with her. Um, she's improvising with the older kid. She's improvising with the other, like, older kid. <laughs> Uh, but then I did I did sneak away with Garrett and Adrian Rick uh, man such a they have a what are those called the planetariums mm-hmm. where the screen is all the way around you like a like a dome <laughs> and they they did the entire journey of landing on the moon and I took Garrett and Garrett was so interested yeah and he was like what year was that and who went and how old is I mean Garrett just I mean from the conception, they showed all the news clips and going to the moon and Apollo 1 and, you know, all the way to Apollo 3. And, it was I mean, really well produced. It was really well produced. And, and you know, Garrett just, it's just so interesting that Garrett has such interest in things like that. Yeah. At eight. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, for sure he's going to be like, fuck this, right? But he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, I need to learn more about it. And I'm like, that's all, you know, that's awesome. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, Delilah's throwing sticks at kids, you know, <laughs> and just making new friends. Um, but it was really cool. And, and Knoxville, the, the crowd was amazing. The theater. The oh my Tennessee gosh. Theater. That theater was beautiful. Is that the theater that he got to move the. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Oh yeah. So check this out. So cool. When you, you, you explain, because you were there for it all. So it's a it's a historic theater. It is an old theater. They call it the, the State Theater, I think. But it's the Tennessee Theater. And there's a statue. And when you walk in, the statue is facing everyone as they walk into the venue. Then one of the ushers, like Garrett, it's a statue from the 1920s. It's on a swivel. So Garrett, they let Garrett turn it around towards the end of so, your show. Yeah, when and you, that way when, when you, people walk out of the theater, they now see it the again. statue is facing them, watching and, them again. And what went through my brain, because <clears throat> I, am, I am the guy, Adrian, that watches a movie. Uh-huh. And I'm sure Rick is too. I find all the continuity, right? Like I see them drink a glass of wine and then it's more yeah, full. Yeah, yeah. Like all those See, we'll be watching things. something. And he'll be like, did you see that? And he like, you have to rewind it and point and it I, out. And I go, look, he unlocked the door twice. Like he unlocked it and then he went to get back they in and back. unlocked it again. Yeah. I'm like, so all those little details, I'm the guy that, Rick, do you find those? I'm sure Rick does. I, I sometimes, I try not to as someone who's, has to look at continuity. I try and not look at other people's mistakes. Just ignore it and give them a pass. Exactly. I, <laughs> dude, I catch it all. I mean, from their shirt buttons to like, I will see something and go, look, Renee, look what just happened. You know, and she'll be, I'll rewind it. She's like, yeah. do we have to really stop? And re-? but don't I'm, worry, Rick, he's not going to watch simple man. He won't catch him. I catch the details. <laughs> yeah. I will. Don't worry about that. Um, and I'm really good at the game. It used to be in a <clears> bar, my uncle's bar. Where they go, what are the difference in the photographs? Yeah. Right? And you have to That's you a game to, in a bar. I remember that from children's well, highlights. Well, the magazine. girl's usually naked <laughs> at the bar. Oh. I mean, it's a scene with a naked girl. A little different than it, a highlights yeah. magazine. Uh, Got some it. of the bars that my uncle owned, it, it, you should probably not hang out at those <laughs> bars. But, um, but I'm good at those games, like finding. So my big question was like, I wondered how many people actually walk into the theater see the statue, then walk out and realize that it has been turned. I'm sure a lot of people don't. I'm sure a lot uh, of people don't. I was shocked that the statue's like not in a case or anything, that that it's this old statue, a piece of history, and they'd like let, I mean, it was heavy. They helped Garrett turn it, but. But it also like, <clears throat> not to go <clears throat> a whole other direction, but very quickly, that is the reason they have such a hard time in crime scenes. Uh-huh. with eyewitnesses because they all see things they see different details in things remember different things. they remember different things so it's really hard when when three or four people were at the scene of a crime uh-huh. and usually their stories and you need consistency you need consistency you need and, and usually somebody might have noticed that the car was red and then you go to the person and go what well, was the car red and they go i'm pretty sure it was blue like because of the way the brain, you yeah. know, the brain works. But I just want, like, I I think I for sure would have been like, wait a minute, that statue. You would, you, yeah, you probably would have got it. The other thing that was really cool is, so um, the 
during your set, the kids, we walked to the front and we took a picture with a big old light up marquee because it was beautiful. And then they walked through the front of the theater and got like popcorn. They gave them popcorn at the concession stand. Um, and so when they saw us wandering around, they, they were like, do you want like a tour? Do you want the secrets of the theater? So that's when they showed us the statue. But they also had redone. They said when the artist came through to repaint the walls, because there's like woodwork on the walls and it had this like scalloped pattern. He was like, look, there are secret paintings in the Within. wall. Yes. So that, that you wouldn't notice unless you like really, really looked. Yeah, yeah. It was like a half moon. Kind of like Disney when they, they <clears throat> throw a dick in there. Stop. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, um, yeah, 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 mouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure that's a dick. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but one of them is like a face looking at you. Another one was like a bumblebee insect kind of thing. That is it so was cool. cool. It was that really cool. So, I, but, you know, that's the thing too with these beautiful theaters and. That is one of the things that I will say that is a positive for me doing theaters. Yeah. Is that as a husband and wife, if you're a fan and you want to go on a date, yeah. that, that that date is now at this beautiful theater that maybe you wouldn't have gone. The ambiance right? of it all. I would, I mean, I would go, I would keep going back. I love the shiver. backstage. I love like, I love being back there and it, it feels old. Yeah. You know, and you see these green rooms and you think to yourself, God, how many amazing artists have been back here. in those dressing rooms, in those dressing yeah. rooms, and and I just and and I think about Garrett and Delilah. Like, it's really hard for me to comprehend what it must feel like to grow up the way they're growing up. You know what's interesting is that you know, I what was that they don't realize it. They don't realize well, right. They just think it's normal, which is that's what I mean. Like, you know, do they think it's normal? Do they understand that this is not normal? It's different. They... I'm watching. I'm watching the experience as Garrett with just Garrett, and now watching it with Delilah, and their response to it, their reaction to it, is very different. For Garrett, I feel like Garrett wasn't aware it was just normal, and not that it's just normal with Delilah, but Garrett never really took like an interest in what was happening. It was just happening, and with Delilah, like. When we went out and saw your picture on the marquee out oh, she front, lost it. Delilah started jumping up and down. She goes, my daddy, my daddy, I love my daddy, you know? Well, and she then, does. She does love and then she saw your big picture and they had a huge poster inside the theater. She went running right up to it and like jumping up and down in front of it. And even this morning, getting ready for school, she loves to do arts and crafts. She was cutting paper and she, had a, she has a stamp that has her name on it that I use to mark her clothes. And she was stamping her name on all the little rectangles she had cut. And she said she would finish this afternoon when she got home from school, but that they're tickets for her performance. So, I, 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 but I just, I'm, you know, I, the, it is so far from the way I grew up. Oh, not, for sure. It's not even fucking sure. close. <clears throat> like, it, 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 to, it still blows my mind. I don't think I'm ever, and I hope I don't ever get there, I don't think I'm ever going to get to a place where I'm like, this is all normal, and this is how my life is supposed to be. Like, when people are nice to me, I think it's amazing. When people go over and above for me, I, I am thrilled. Like, I mean, it it is so far removed yeah. from the way I grew up. I have, you know, and, I have, and Garrett, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt. No. Well, i sorry to interrupt you interrupting me. Um <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, no, I, I just, I look at it and I go, I mean, Garrett has the run of the place. Yeah. Like, I mean, people, Garrett walks into these theaters and people are like, oh my God, that's Steve's son. What do you want? You want a tour? We, we had gotten this army man with, with a parachute. I put it on my Facebook and Garrett was like, I want to throw the army man off the balcony so it would parachute down, right? So... I mean, I, ushers are like running it back up to him, you know, so he can do it again. And then, and then they're like, because it had this beautiful catwalk in the middle for the lighting. And the dude was like, I can't take you up there, but do you want to see it come from the very, very And Garrett's like, yeah. And this dude's like running up there to do this for him. And I'm just sitting there going, wow, like, wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, holy shit. These kids are on a tour bus in their little man cave and their little princess bunks. And yeah. I, I don't, it's just, you know, a Garrett, you know, we, we did a little project with Garrett and we're starting to do it more where we go, we're at the airport. You walk us through everything you're supposed to do. I want to see if you can do this on your own. And Garrett's like, 
we walk in here, we do this. I mean, he was, we just let him. Yeah. And, and that's I, like, I didn't get on an airplane <clears throat> until my 20s. Yeah. I didn't go to a fucking airport until my 20s. Yeah. You know, and I remember being like, oh shit, like, how am I going to get from where or what or, you know, and I'm teaching Garrett, like, read the signs. Where are we going? You know, and Garrett's handling it, eight years old. I mean, he has become such a great traveler. Yeah. You know, he pulls his bag out. He knows the TSA deal. Like, you know, it, it, it's just. This is the first time Delilah wanted to. We were literally walking out the door. And then she goes, no, my suitcase. And I had us packed in one big, massive suitcase just to keep it easy. And so here's Delilah stuffing books and stuffed animals in her little pink suitcase. And you're like, just let her take Stuffies. it. So we did, and she did. She wanted to wheel it through the, the airport. The, Garrett, in her Garrett would be, Garrett was carry me. I don't want to walk; it's too far. <laughs> you know, carry my backpack. Delilah's the opposite. Yeah, Delilah's like, "Fuck you! Don't carry me. I got this shit." And she had her little backpack and her little deal, and she's, I mean, she's keeping up, man. Three years old. This little girl is keeping up with us, which is. You look at your kids and you go, okay, what traits did our kids get from us? <laughs> right? You look at it. Delilah, uh-huh. Delilah is like me. Go, go, go. I want to be in the action. I don't need to sleep. I don't want to sleep. And I'm happy. I am always in a very good mood. I love to party. I love to have drinks. I love yeah. to be up late night. Yeah. And but I'll Delilah still... will say, but the party's not over. Why <laughs> yes. do I have to go to bed? De- Delilah definitely has the, from me, the go, go, go. Yeah. I'm in. First two days, no nap. And did not get grumpy, did not get, mm. I mean, a little, but she's a woman. <laughs> But I mean, for the most. She's like you. (laughs) Motherfucker. You know what? Start over. Let's start over. Clap hands. We'll start. (laughs) You're good today, dude. Thanks. It's a day quill. It's a day quill. (laughs) Renee's a little high right now. She's getting high on my supply. Um, But, you know, Delilah's got that go, 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 go. Fuck the rules. Figure it out. Like, and Garrett got your. No, but this isn't the rule. (laughs) Follow the rules. And I'm like, fuck the rules, Garrett. No. We got to play by the rules. I'm like, I'm a, I'm a rule breaker, bro. But but definitely, so then Delilah, man, she was go, 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 go. We found out, we woke, we woke up in, Adla- in Atlanta. I absolutely know we've talked about this before, but that aquarium, wow. Yeah. I mean. They say it's the best in the country. It is unbelievable and then tatiana was telling me because she was in the military and they traveled a lot and they were in japan she said that that and there's an aquarium in japan and actually they say that like those are the best two in the world and you get to pick out your sushi <laughs> but you're like oh i want i want to eat that one and they're like okay and they, not funny they go get it <laughs> okay kind of funny it's a little funny it's a little funny um but i mean <clears throat> wow yeah yeah i'm Guys, well, first of all, I like Atlanta. Yeah. There's something about that. It has its own thing. People dress very dapper. There, You know what? Atlanta does have a unique sense of fashion. People are like bold and brave with their fashion choices in a way that I would kind of compare to like a New York or a Miami. People dress very dapper. <clears throat> um, oh, my gosh. We ended up, you know, on a whim because we were Ubering it to the um, – aquarium we're like oh you know this breakfast place looks good yeah i didn't realize how lucky we got that we walked in and got a table because th- after that line wrapped around i mean the rest of the day line wrapped around oh my god rick and adrian dude let me tell you what i ate <laughs> oh my god biscuit <laughs> on top of the biscuit thinly sliced fried chicken on top of that Fried egg, on top of that, bacon. Yes. Then they smothered the whole thing in gravy. But it wasn't like a traditional oh. gravy. It was like a colored oh. gravy, wasn't it? Or was it, that from I, all it, the bacon I, grease? I, I, I don't mean, know. Maybe I, it was gravy it was, colored from bacon grease. And then Garrett's eating his French toast. He goes, five stars. <laughs> this place, Dad. I wish we had one of these in New Braunfels. 
<laughs> five stars. I mean, this place, and right? Uh, the yeah. Service, phenomenal. Food, f- I mean, it was, I mean, it was I think amazing. your item was off the menu because the waiter came over and he goes, okay, have you been here before? And we were like, no. And he goes, okay, two off the menu items and I think they're the best things. And like, I go, I, I, I went, I went, yeah. I went. <laughs> uh, for Diddy, you know, for Diddy. Yeah. So, I mean, delicious. Garrett was like, oh, my God, best French sauce I ever had, Dad. It's so good. <laughs> but it, but it was literally across the street from the the um, aquarium. Aquarium, yeah. When are the aquarium? And this aquarium, I could sit there all day. Yeah. At one point, we found ourselves just sitting there, just looking. I mean, because the aquariums are so huge. Yeah. And so I The mean, tanks are huge. Beautiful. I mean, the bag- bagula, the ba- <laughs> ba- Beluga. Keep going, keep going. The beluga whale. That is hands down my favorite. I just think they're like crazy, majestical. They they almost look like magical, mythical creatures. It was awesome. And then they have two, two whale sharks. One is 24 foot. The other one is 26 foot. Yeah. And you don't ever see them together. That's how big this aquarium is. I mean, it is. Um, and then to see Delilah like. Oh, Dad, that's that, and there's Nemo, and yeah. you know that's a hammerhead, and I mean puffins and penguins. It was and- it was a really you know that's to me is the, the is the thing that makes traveling with our children worth it. Yeah, I mean all of it really, right? Because they're learning to travel, they're learning to get on an airplane, they're learning to jump on a bus and Honestly, different cities. And for you know, me, this trip, I mean, you were working, and I would hang back with the kids. Um, but this trip, I realized like they got so much good sibling time in, like we don't realize because of the age gap and Garrett's got his baseball and his jujitsu and like all of his activities, they don't necessarily have a ton of time. That's just like them to chill and be siblings. I've said that before. That's one of the favorite things about being on the road is being trapped. Yeah. Literally being trapped on that bus with your family. We all have to be together. Yeah. You know, and Delilah would jump on top of our bed in the back and we would just cuddle for hours and watch whatever. Yeah. Garrett would come in and cuddle with us. And it was, it's just, you know, when you're at home, it's the constant, there's a lot of space at our house. Yeah. So everybody's separated and everybody's in different rooms and we're running to baseball or jujitsu or whatever. It, when we're together, we're just together. Yeah. They just hung out. They hung out together. They hung out together yeah. as, and they played. Yeah. You know, Garrett and Delilah would play. And then the bus driver, I got to tell you, man, what a sweet guy. He bought Delilah a little bitty giraffe and a little book. And he goes, across the street, or on the other side of this block, is the Jim Henson Museum. Well, it's the Museum of, of puppetry, puppetry, of puppetry arts. But Jim Henson is the... The king of it, right? Yeah. He, he made it famous. So we went over there because they were going to do a... They were doing a puppet show... In their but we're not talking about like little kid puppets. I mean, it is the Center for Puppetry Arts. It is a professionally produced production. But this it was, was like a touring company. Artsy fartsy <laughs> bullshit. And I sit there and I think to myself, yes, this artsy bu- fartsy bullshit. It needs to be there. But you're also like, I I will not come back. Well, okay. Why not do a show? That is more general market, not so artsy fartsy. We were not the intended audience. Who the it fuck said, is? It said ages twelve and up. I have been. You haven't been, but I went. No, it wasn't that puppet theater. You know what? I went to. There's another puppet theater in Phoenix, and Garrett and I have gone to see a show there when he was younger, and that was geared towards younger kids. Your mom went with us. Um, and it was more appropriate. I mean, I think if we had been there two weeks later, they were doing the emperor has clothes or doesn't have clothes or whatever that but fable dude, is. I mean, wh- what the I'm saying is clothes. I want the arts to succeed. I think it's really cool to do a puppet show. As do I, I think, so quit shitting on I it. I think that, yes, have some artsy fartsy bullshit. But if you want people to come, make it fucking good. This was not good. <laughs> I don't know. I disagree. I oh, mean, what all these they... hippies running around with sticks, like, and I'm like, what the fuck is going no, on right what, now? The way they like the way they reuse the set pieces and things like that. That that's creativity. <laughs> it's boring. It's it was fucking boring. This, this one was a little slow. Yeah. Look, I ain't mad at them. Yes. Different strokes for different folks. 
However, if you... It wasn't Disney on ice. If you want the arts to continue, do provide a show that is for the general market. I hear you. This was a puppet company out of New York. It was probably a little too avant-garde uh, Is that the word? Avant-garde? Yes, that's the word. Are you sure that's the word? Yes. Okay, it was very avant-garde. <laughs> you don't have to spell and it. Don't I'm, worry. I'm, I'm not going to go there again. <laughs> How about that? How about they lost me as a customer? Um, but it was, it was really cool to see like actual Big Bird. Yeah, that like, was I mean, awesome. And Kermit the Frog, Kermit the Frog. and, and then, Piggy. I didn't realize that he did Pan's Labyrinth. No, it wasn't Pan's Labyrinth. It's something else. Yes. Um, it's it's a different... Um, I mean, maybe he did do Pan's Labyrinth too, but what was being displayed there was Pan's Labyrinth. It, La- Labyrinth? No, I can't say that. Ish. But it's a different thing. It's Pan's Labyrinth. G- Jim Henson's... It's called something else. But yeah... Um, He's done all kinds well, and, of weird and wacky And Adrian things. and Rick, and I know that you girls are probably not into this. Fraggle Rock was a big deal when I was a kid. Do you know Fraggle Rock? Why do, was Fraggle you know? Rock a big deal? I mean, I know of it, it but a, it wasn't a big deal for me. Worries for another day. Dancing cares away. Down to <laughs> Fraggle Rock. <laughs> Dude, they had Uncle Traveling Matt. They had like the little Uncle Traveling Matt. And I was like, the little dozers. And I was like, oh my God. Like. <laughs> That was a big show when I was a kid. I know yeah. Rick wants to talk about it. Go. No, no, they um they re-released it or I have new ones uh, not too long ago, and it is awesome. And oh, then we it's puppets it to again. The kids. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, was that on HBO? Did that first? I think it was on HBO. I think so. Fraggle too. Rock was an HBO yeah. show. Yeah, I dude, I as a kid, I always think of HBO as like the sexy, racy stuff. Well, first of all, as kids, our our generation, we didn't have much. Like we had Sunday mornings, we had the Cartoon Express on USA, and then we had HBO Fraggle Rock. <laughs> like, and so if, and Punky Brewster, I still oh, want to bone Steve's her. Crush. That's Steve's yeah, crush, that's Steve's crush, Punky cute. Brewster. <clears throat> Worries for another day, dance cares away. Um, Down at Fraggle Rock. What age is it appropriate for? Would both it's our kids. kids be into it? Oh yeah. Okay, we got we got to show it to him now that we've been to the Center for Puppetry Arts. But dude, I I love that show and to see the little Fraggle Rock puppets, yeah. I was like, oh man, because it's one of those that kind of is in the back of your brain. Yeah. You know, and then when I saw it, I was like, oh shit, like I know Fraggle Rock. Yeah. You know, um, Pan's you, Labyrinth, right? I don't know. I'm Lab- Rick's they, Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Yeah, I didn't know that that was a Jim Henson thing. Because it's dark. He has some other darker things. He does. He even did a show. Um, it was called like The World of Jim Henson. And it was kind of wacky and weird and out there. And it was like. Dark. All of it. I, yeah. People associate him with Sesame Street and Fraggle Rock. But he had well, people all kinds of other stuff. People don't realize how dark Disney is. Yeah. Remember we talked about that? Like the Winnie yeah. the Pooh ride. He dies and comes back a fucking ghost. Like, do do my kids need this right now? Yeah, it's for tiny children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Renee and I going through there. Like, did Minnie the like Pooh just got murdered? Electrocuted or something? Yeah, yeah, he weird. just got murdered. Like, mm-hmm. we're watching this right now. Um, but anyway, we we bailed on the the avant garde. <laughs> we bailed. Well, Delilah was not. Delilah wasn't feeling well. And then and Renee, in her classic Renee fashion, we were like. Let's get the fuck out of here, right? We get the team, we bounce, door closes behind us, and then Captain Evil's like, I left my cell phone My phone in the is theater. on the seat, in the theater well, bench. Well, Delilah's not feeling well, and I'm like, I'm going to meet you at the bus. So I walk back to the it's bus. It's getting close to showtime, too. An hour goes by. Was I gone for an hour? I couldn't get back in the building. They'd already shut down the box office, and I couldn't get back in the building. And I'm like knocking on the door, this is like a picture like an old schoolhouse with all these windows, multi floors. And I'm like going around banging on any window I can reach. I go back to the service entrance. I'm pushing the call button. I can see there's a camera. And I'm like, they probably think I'm like a crazy woman trying to. Finally, she into gets the consequences. Theater. That's why I'm laughing. Finally, you're at. I knew at some point there would be an punished. intermission. I was like, at some point, there's going to be an intermission or someone is going to have to come out of the theater to pee and I will flag them down and get their attention. <laughs> I just need to be here when that happens. And that's what happened. I'm in the bus, hanging out. 
<clears throat> Me and Garrett in our little man caves. And then I'm like, I don't have my phone and you've left. So I can't even like call the theater and see if maybe someone picks up the phone, which I doubt they would. But I was like, I can't even tell you I'm still here and I can't leave. But we are down. T- okay. The We're downtown Atlanta. No offense to da- Atlanta. Cause I love that town. Midtown. We were midtown. We're in midtown. Pretty sketch with the homeless crew. Okay. I mean, couple of weekends, grown men. Couple of grown are men. Working in midtown. Couple of grown men with. Leah Tarts, a, a whole thing. So I'm like, I'm going to the bus. Like, I can't stand out here. I mean, I, I am a badass, but I cannot stand out here with a three year old and Garrett. Like, I gotta, I can't just stand here. So I go to the bus and I'm thinking, oh, Renee's gonna go in and get her stuff and be, and be right behind me. An hour, Renee's out there trying to get in, trying to get her phone. Yeah. I knew exactly um, where it was too. Like the usher, he like stuck his head out and I was like, my phone is on that bench in the back. He goes, I'll grab it for you. He went in and grabbed it for me, like stuck it back out the door. I mean, I was recalling it. So I was hoping. It was on somebody, silent. Of course it was. It was well, Cause we were in a theater. Why Call my phone. Um, that was my fear is that it wasn't on silent and you're blowing up my phone. And well, that would have helped because then people would have been like, find it. That would have been awful. How do we shut this bitch up <laughs> and I'll go find her. But, um, <laughs> It, it was the, the I will say that the the puppetry side of things was really cool. The puppet museum part. The yeah. show. If you would have forced me to go there, it's just me and you on a date, I would have been like, um, Oh, you would have been so. Pissed. I better get laid after this. <laughs> like there's, there's payments have to be made. Up, oh, some were canceled. Um, but then, um, oh, I didn't even tell you this. Huh. Um, DJ Hurricane from the Beastie Boys came to my show. Oh, how cool. Which show? The one in Atlanta? The one in Atlanta. Yeah. And I immediately, I saw him in Corpus a million years ago when I saw the Beastie Boys. How random. Well, no, it's not random. He's friends with Mike Young. Oh, okay. So he came with, a, uh, with Mike Jeff. Mike Young is friends with everybody. Oh, he knows everybody. And I was, I was thinking about Rick because I know Rick did History of Hip Hop. Uh-huh. Did y'all do anything with DJ Hurricane? Yeah. Yeah. He was in, in the doc. For, it was the History of Atlanta Hip Hop. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, super cool dude. Yeah. And he was laughing because he walked in and me and Garrett were playing ping pong. And he was like, oh, is this what y'all comedians do backstage? And Mike goes, not normally, but with Steve's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Steve's a more family friendly back here, you know. Yeah. Um, but I will say that, at, you know, every single show. So many great people at the meet and greet. Oh, yes. I you have know. to say thank you to, um, and I feel so bad, Cool Beans. Her name's Patricia, but she I know Cool Beans because that's her Instagram handle, and she always is super sweet and supportive and comments on our things. She brought the sweetest gift for all of us, super thoughtful, to Chattanooga. And I feel so bad because the kids and I didn't get off the bus. I <coughs> didn't get to say hello or meet her in person. But thank you. That was a very sweet gift. Thank you, Patricia. But that's what makes it, I mean, you know, every single show. <clears throat> You know, you sit there and you go, well, maybe I don't want to do meet and greet because it's just too hard. Yeah. But, you know, when I do the meet and greet, to me, it's the, it is the icing on the cake. It's the human connection. It's the oil in the engine. I mean, when people come to me and say, hey, you know, you got me through this or you got me through that or, or, um, I had a guy come up to me and say, man, I lost my brother. I lost my father. And. You know, he, he broke down and I hugged him and we hugged each other. And he said, thank you for getting me through these tough times. And, yeah. you know, when I have veterans come up to me and say, hey, you know, the fact that you talk about suicide awareness after your show, you know, really means a lot to me. I mean, it, it just those moments. And we had a lot of those moments this weekend yeah. where, you know, it's just very meaningful. And, and it really makes makes me feel like what I do Serves worth, a purpose. Serves a purpose, and that that people do care, and that people do enjoy. Yeah. The the laughter. A purpose beyond the ego of it yeah, all. Yeah. A purpose behind the me going up there, going, you're filling my soul with your laughter, and you're helping me, but to find out that I'm also helping them, and to be able to hug those people. Yeah. To be able to shake their hand, to be able to to give them that photograph that you know several people. Oh my God, I can't believe I get to meet you. You know, that to me, you know, and, and this weekend was just, it was very full of that. Yeah. You know, not that other weekends aren't. This weekend, for whatever reason, was full of the emotional meet and greet. And, uh, you know, and Kate, who, who takes the pictures, uh-huh. 
she's like, Steve, and you know, she does all the tours, right? She was Steve, she's I, I she's like, with you, I never know when to like stop it or not stop it. Say or, next. Or, keep or it, keep push them along. She yeah. goes, because she goes, you're hugging them, you're talking to them, you're you're holding their hands, you know, and I go, because it's those little moments that not only make it a wonderful experience for them, but it makes it a wonderful experience. It's fulfilling for you for too. Me, yeah. You know, and, and to have that human connection and to see that, that we are affecting lives and that other people view our stand up as, as something that's therapeutic. Your stand up. Our stand up. Without you, there's no show. Okay. If you're not leaving your phone <laughs> in a theater, there's nothing to talk about. And I'm not making you take family pictures once a year. <laughs> oh my God. That bit is so funny right now. I love that bit so much, dude. It's killing. Yeah. Uh, and, and to have people come to me and go, oh, my God, yes. that's our life. Yes. Right. I, I absolutely love it. But um, it was a great weekend overall. And to share it with my family in close quarters. Yeah. Um, we, we did. <clears throat> we have to figure out a way to be more careful with with Delilah. Um, poor girl, man. She got home and we we, we put her down for. An, well, first of all, she napped from the airport all the way home, which was about an hour, 45 minutes. Yeah. Then we get home. She's well, you got to say that we started our morning. What time? The bus? 4.30. 4 in the morning. 4 30 in the yeah. morning we were, the bus was dropping us back off at the airport. Yep. And, you know, flying. She drove from the airport, took a nap. We got home. She got a little cranky. So we're like, okay, maybe she needs another nap. She went to bed at 3.30, 4 o'clock. And Renee's calling me at 8 going, so it was like 7.30 before she woke up again. She's like, she has not woken up. And I'm like, well, let her sleep, you know? And and she did. And I get home. I shower. I put Garrett down. I come out. She's 10, 10 o'clock at night. She's watching TV. And I'm like, oh, man. I don't know, know if we're, we're going really to get her back, her back down, man. Um, but she did. She ended up going back down. But, you know, you because she's always such a happy kid, yeah. You tend to forget that, oh, wait a minute, she's pushing herself. We still need to help her regulate. Yeah, she's pushing yeah. herself harder than than we think because she's in a good, you know, Garrett has the same issue when it comes to illnesses. Garrett will not tell you he's sick until, until the doctor's telling you, why haven't you brought this child in? And we're like, he just told us. Because Garrett will just keep going. You know, so we do have to figure out a way to, to be more... Um, on it with Delilah. I realized this time too. I, you know, I, I was like, oh, I got home and I was tired and I'm an adult. So if I'm this tired, it's got to be amplified for little Delilah. And this time too, I, you know, you're usually like, well, now you sympathize with me. And, <laughs> and usually I'm like, oh, quit your complaining. Like, get over it, just go. But like, after this tour bus trip, I do sympathize with you a little more. The, no, honestly, yes, I'm being honest. I'm Are we having a moment? We're having a moment. We're having a moment. The a tour bus schedule is is hard. Renee, this is very avant-garde of you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. No, but the 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 that grueling schedule and then being tired and you have found a process for seamlessly transitioning yourself back into a oh, normal dude. schedule. Because I get home. It's hard. I get home off the road after having a weekend like that. Yeah. And Renee's like, let's go. Let's go. Be a dad. No. Don't be grumpy. <laughs> Wash this clothes. Cook for us. No, that is not Take care of your kids. I'm done with them. I've had them all Shut weekend. Mouth. You Shut take care mouth. of them. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I just got off the road. Like, I haven't slept. I don't care. <laughs> Do it. And now... <laughs> And I do. I do do it. I handle it. Daddy <laughs> handles it. Now you know. <laughs> the the that theater schedule is It's brutal. hard. Yeah. And, and it's it's like hard. It's like a double edged edge sword in that there are lots of bonuses for taking your family with you um, and getting to spend that time together. But I also feel like and it's nice to not have to like unpack a bag in each city and pack your sh stuff back up and schlep it. But it's hard to sleep well on a tour bus. And also, it's really hard because you can't poop on a tour bus. Yep, and you can't have sex. I don't know how we went from poop <laughs> to sex, but... Um, Both those things are really hard. <laughs> you have to wait to poop at the theater. Some more than others. And, the, like, and the bad part is, like, they know. Yes! Like, you get to the theater and you're like, hey, guys, 
And then, and then you go and you shit and you leave and they're like, they're and just it's like shit. this huge backstage. They for sure. And you're like, shit. you walk in and the first thing you're like is like, excuse me, where's the restroom? Hey man, <laughs> hey, where's the shitter? <laughs> Not nice to meet you, but hey just man. Hey, where's the restroom? <laughs> I gotta cut some turds with this turd cutter here, and I don't know if you got a place for me to shit. But <laughs> <It's> embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> That part is hard. It's embarrassing. Hey, man, don't, don't go in there. Part. My wife just took a big old <laughs> shit. <Stop. laughs> I don't... Who plans their poops? It is hard to plan I had to poops. fish Delilah's turds out of the toilet with, like, like a doggy bag because little kids don't understand that concept. Uh, they can't be like, okay, Delilah, now it's time to poop. We're at the theater. Okay, so... <laughs> I'd like to thank our sponsors... <laughs> We want to thank Aztec Chevrolet for always being there for us. Um, they have one in Beeville. They have one in Uvalde. They have one in Goliad. Please give them a chance. Old Salt Coffee, delicious. We absolutely love it. Trevino 10, pick cherries. They always take care of us. And uh, I think it's a good time to announce that Renee and I are producing another podcast called The Rambling Gypsy with our friend Tiffany. So, Give that one a listen. I think they're doing a great job. Yes. Oh, I, I, they're hoot. They are a hoot. Yes, and it is very uh, female centric, and it's it's they are very candid. Yes. Uh, with they their have conversation. No two ladies who have no problem speaking their mind. I oh, they have no problem, and and we love it. We hope you guys uh, give them a chance. Go ahead. Oh well, if you're done, are you done with the sponsors? Because I just want to say one thing. Just oh, Rebecca. I see, uh, oh, I see a question coming up a lot. People are asking. Um, they're saying like, oh, I'm seeing you live coming up. I already have tickets to your show, but the special is dropping. Like, are they the New same material. thing? So no, I just want to be clear. The tour is the good life and it is all new material. All new material. And the special is Simple Man and that's completely different material. I just, I just hope that there's people that love to go on this journey with me, right? I, I, I hope that they love seeing the material from scratch and then seeing it polished and then seeing it filmed, and yeah. then know, oh, here, here we go again, yeah. right? And we so go even on this if journey. they did see you on the right. road, depending on where they saw you, Simple Man is like, like you said, it's the, it is a finished, produced version of that. Yes, uh, Rick, have you seen the new material yet? No, I was actually thinking of coming. Uh, you're in Austin this week. I was thinking of coming this week to see it. Oh man, I'd love to see you, dude. Bring the Jordan Twelves. <laughs> oh, that's right. You don't have them. Um, and you're not allowed to get them. My bad, dog. We're the same old bullshit then. Yeah, you're going to see my Jordan 4s. What size are you anyway? they they got to be more expensive for Shreks like you. I'm only 12 and a half. You're 12 and a half? Was that big? How do you hold your body up? <laughs> <laughs> Very top heavy. <laughs> I mean, you would think the little ankles would break on those, uh, on those shoes. That's why he wears high tops. Every time I see you, I have <laughs> ankle funny. problems. Do you really? That's hilarious. Yes. Um, I, I, dude, yeah, Rick's like, no, this is not hilarious. I'm dying over here because the new girl's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Did he just say that to his friend Rick? We are friends. He knows what he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and he ended up with a beautiful wife, so you know he's successful. We love you, Rick. You know he makes money. We love you. Um, and he's got a... Not a big foot. He does not have a big foot. <laughs> we love you, Rick. Man, I would love to see you on Friday. Rick oh just my got God. Real quiet. Adrian's dying, dude. Oh, Rick got Adrian real is dying. Quiet. I'm this sorry this we made episode, you whatever happens, team. happens. You like it, you don't like it. They all can't be great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. We'll see you next time. We love you guys. Steve Trevino and Captain Evil. Please like, please share, please tell the world about Simple Man. Please. We love you guys. Thank you. <laughs>